Hello, how are you today? Uh, me, I shall say I'm a little bit nervous. It's the first time that I get to speak at Black Hat and it's amazing here. But there's also something else that I, I want to get off my chest. Uh, this, this talk is about a project called Blue Peel. And if you love movies, this rings a bell, right? But I shall tell you that I never watched the Matrix movie, so sorry, I thought you needed to know. But so, uh, who am I? I, yeah, I have birth taste in movies, and I work in Rome at Sapienza University. In the last couple of years, in my postdoc, I've been working on software security problems, including malware analysis. Uh, we are here, code obfuscation, code reuse attacks, more generally, binary analysis realm. But we are here to talk about a problem in malware analysis the problem of malware evasion. So we have samples, increasingly more complex, that try to withstand dynamic analysis that we want to perform by using adversarial techniques to detect analysis systems and hide their true colors. Uh, as researchers, as a community, we try to react by coming up with better designs, more transparent designs, for instance, for sandboxes, now we have virtual machine introspection techniques where we moved the analysis outside the virtualized environment to minimize the, the artifacts that we introduce in the process. And this is great, right? Um, when I first started working on this project, I asked myself, and I'm asking you now, what happens next? When you have an interesting sample and you need to analyze this sample, you need to dissect this sample, what happens? Well, uh, sometimes you're ending up facing the same adversarial techniques that we have solutions for the automatic stage, but when you're a malware analyst, you have to waste quite some time disarming red pills for several elevations. There have been some proposals to recently to use virtual machine introspection also for debugging, but if you're a malware analyst and you've been doing this for quite some time, you have your tools that you love for monitoring a lot of, not just a debugger, but many third-party tools for monitoring. Maybe you don't like semantic gaps, unless you really have to. And monitoring sometimes is just one part of the story. You also need to alter behaviors, to change behaviors, and so you are introducing artifacts. In this talk, I'm going to first give you the pitch, the high-level bits of what we did with Blue Peel, and I will be detailing how we did that, and how I think Blue Peel can be helping malware analysts in their daily life. So, those approaches that I was mentioning, they try to achieve transparency with a passive approach, and by that I mean that they just minimize the artifacts in the design. But when you're dissecting a sample, it's a little bit different. You might be introducing artifacts yourself. And we try to follow an active approach. So the idea is that we create a blue pill for malware that will give a sample to illusion that it's executing on a machine, on a victim machine, while actually you're there digging into it and analyzing it. We want to neutralize the red pills that malware has for evasions. The idea is that you have to fake answers to every query that a malware can make in a coordinated manner, but there's more to it than that. We, we want to enhance the section capabilities for analysts. We want to, for instance, for starters, we want to hide the artifacts of third-party monitoring tools that you run alongside your debugger. We want to provide features to apply code edits, change the code in a stealthy manner, and um, we want the systems to be extensible, customizable by the user. If the user needs a new hook in the system, it should be easy to extend the system, to deal with new patterns in your, in your work. And when I started working on this, of course, we had to study the literature on evasions. And, you know, there is so much ground to cover. You have hardware uh, artifacts, hypervisor artifacts, software setup, Windows install, wear and tear state of the machine, uptime, there is a lot, right? Many angles to cover. And uh, malware authors are smart. They might make coordinated queries with different primitives in case you're trying to fake the state of your system. 
evasions might be general, you might be looking for overheads, or you might be looking for that specific artifact of that sandbox or debugger. So and sometimes adjusting the systems to react to new evasions, it takes time to rethink the design or to make some changes. We react slowly sometimes. And so it's time I tell you what we actually did with Blue Peel, which um, I like to think of Blue Peel as a dynamic analysis framework for malware where we build on this intuition, this parodying, we could call it, where you observe, check, and replace. Observe, I mean that we intercept some potentially evasive queries that a sample can make in the system. We check whether the value that the system will normally return is likely to give away the presence of a user behind the system or of the system itself, or in other words, if this value wouldn't meet the sample's expectations. And in that case, we have to fix this value. We replace the value with something that, in our opinion, can work for the sample. On top of that, we are able to implement a full-fledged malware analysis system on top of this paradigm. And we use dynamic power instrumentation, good old DBI. DBI has been around for a couple of decades in software security. Uh, it's why, well, it's, it's very easy to use. It's easy to write a DBI tool to do some monitoring tasks, so it's easy to extend a DBI system. You don't have semantic gaps. Actually, you operate in the same address space of the program that you are analyzing. This means that you can be calling APIs of the operating system to make inspections, or you can even be opening files. You, you have quite the freedom. If you want to fake answers, DBI is focusing the, the actions, it's restricting the impact on a single process, so you have better control on this faking process. And one big advantage of the DBI abstraction is that it's going to hide the code that performs the analysis from the code that gets analyzed. There is a catch, though. DBI works only in user space, at least most DBI engines are user space, so we can only do user land malware. We have to do observe, check, replace, right? So we have to place some probes, some hooks, and we start from low-level facts that you might give away using special instructions. Think of CPU ID, RDTSC, those instructions. But then you also have high-level queries. You have library functions for, to look for files, processes, drivers, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, malware authors, they know Windows internals very well, so they might be using system calls directly, system calls that this library function used down there. They might use system calls directly. So when you're writing such a system, it's, it's better if you... Uh, you know, place the instrumentation at system call level, so you're able to catch in a single spot multiple library implementation. You have to take care of exceptions, exceptional control flow, or the Windows management instrumentation subsystem for queries that you can make. And it's important that for an analyst, these hooks are easy to extend or even to create new ones, because at some point you're going to need them too. Dynamic analysis, so this means that we are executing stuff and there's time into the equation. So we have two enemies. One is hover detection. We are analyzing something, we are slowing down the execution. So you might look for that, for those hoverheads. Or the, the sample might play with us and play with our time budget using stalling techniques. A lot of sleep operations that you have to patch. Um, you can try to face both problems by patching time-related operations, but you have to be wise in that you, need to you cannot patch them independently. You need to expose a consistent view of the system, so um, of the time, and so you need a coordinated faking. Also, you can think, okay, I'm going to fast-forward time when you try to sleep for that long, or you try to ma do many short sleep operations, but you have to keep track of the time that uh, a sample wants to sleep for, because when you're going to forge a value for a time query, then you also need to take that time into the equation. Okay, you might be telling me now, but this is hardly sound. And I, I agree with you, it's not, but can work in practice for the time patterns, time-related patterns that we, we see in malware. 
And if you do this for a single process, it's easier compared to accelerating an entire virtual machine. Because if you don't do that right, you might cause instabilities inside the operating system implementation. You need to distinguish what you're accelerating. Um, uh, yeah, so far it's like I've been presenting you a sandbox, right? So you want to know how you make this section here. So we offer a GDB remote interface for debugging. So you can plug your debugger on top of GDB remote protocol, which is offered by Intel PIM, this dynamic memory instrumentation framework. We had to strengthen this interface to deal with the, with some with the peculiarities of the malware domain, some debugger detection, stuff like that. But at the same time, we also had to add hooks to protect, to shield the artifacts that you have with monitoring tools when you are intercepting network traffic, this kind of stuff. So we hide those artifacts. Plus, I mentioned code edits. So the idea is that we want users to be able to change instructions in a sample. But if the sample tries to look up its own code, normally we'll see the changes, right? But with DBI, the nice thing is that you have a decoupled view of what you execute and what's the original code. So we are able to intervene in the JIT compilation process that happens in the DBI engine to replace the original instructions with some trampoline to a region. So this means that from starting with one byte, you can squeeze in a patch of arbitrary length, and the sample will still see the original instructions. And I have a confession to make. Uh, I lied to you, or let's say I omitted something from you, and I haven't been addressing DBI evasions. So in previous Black Hat editions, we had very nice talks on ways that you can detect the presence of DBI itself. And earlier this year, I worked on this uh, HSCCS paper on using DBI for security and how you might get caught red-handed, uh, we, de we devised a library of mitigations that we also use in Blue Peel. And actually, we extend those mitigations to deal with time overheads and further artifacts that they arise when you're debugging. Uh, there's one more thing that is uh, th that I like in this in this project is that you have dynamic memory instrumentation. You're able to devise your analysis. So why don't we use powerful existing program analysis that are useful for reverse engineering? Right. Think of taint analysis. So normally, when you use taint analysis or symbolic execution in a black box manner, uh, you hit the wall. So you have scalability or imprecision. You have those kind of problem, but what if you put this analysis under the control of an analyst? So let's say that you spot something interesting during the dissection, not before starting the analysis. So you might decide, OK, I want to put a taint mark on this buffer, and I want to see how the program is going to manipulate those data. And I will be getting back to this in a little bit. But, um, it's time that I show you how you can actually use Blue Peel. So this is what you will do today. I think you have a number of sandboxes for the automatic stage. You get your reports, and then you move to the dissection stage, the manual stage. So you start in your debugging, in your debugging session. Um, you have to disarm a number of red pills for your hypervisor because maybe you're using VirtualBox, VMware. So you need to disarm those pills, disarm pills for debuggers. You waste some time, right? And then, then you meet a new evasion one day, and you have to think hard how to fight this evasion. And you come up with a solution eventually. You have an ad hoc solution, and you know you restart the analysis. But when you face another sample, uh, it's like you're going to start over, right? Um, with Blue Pill, we try to put everything in a single piece, in a single box. We try to reconcile automatic and manual analysis. Um, by that, I mean that for starters, uh, so you get your report from your sandbox or a shorter, smaller report in Blue Pill. You start the dissection phase, and we are shielding you from the uh, red pills that we already know for debuggers, hypervisors, all this stuff. Then maybe you wrote some hooks that monitor specific aspects of the system or they change them. You made a new evasion. And what you do, of course, yeah, you still have to think hard to fight the evasion, but you can add some hooks to the system. 
you make some you make some attempts, eventually you figure out the solution, a countermeasure, but this time, as part of a feedback loop, this countermeasure is going to extend the system. So the human agent is going to extend the system. And so you can reuse your work next time. We trained this way to make our implementation stronger. We started with tools like Alcacer or all the red pills that are, uh, that are out there for debugging hypervisors. And then we moved to complex malware. We, we took on quite a few notable samples with exotic evasions, this kind of stuff. But we learned a lot also from executable protectors. So there are protectors like VM Protect that they have very nasty, elegant tricks to disarm. And but yeah, maybe you're not sold on this one yet. You might even myself. I thought maybe I'm biased. It's really that extensible the system. So we 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 made this experiment. We took some computer science students and we gave we gave them some notable evasive malware. We gave them Furtim. Furtim is a sample that three years ago was able to evade nearly any sandbox that was around. Um, sand sandboxes, but they had also countermeasures for human analysts or AV products, firewalls, all kind of stuff. More than 400 evasive tricks in one sample. So this is a masterpiece for evasion. And there is a very nice report from Sentinel-1. So we, we knew this report. The students didn't, I swear. And we knew that one hook was missing in Blue Pill for NT enumerate key. What we didn't know is that there was another version that was undocumented even in that report about enum display settings. But first thing first, NT enumerate key. So an initial analysis in Blue Pill revealed quite a few evasive queries, and the students decided to focus on this one that was based on anti-query system information. So uh, we already handled that evasion, but the students decided to put a taint mark on the output of this system call to see how first team would process this data. And this revealed the presence of white char uh, string processing functions. So they wrote some hooks just to intercept those functions and print the arguments. At some point, this VBox string appeared. So what they had to do is uh, to write a hook to make this disappear. So they trace back the string from to the NT enumerate keys call to intercept that this is call, and when the uh, parameter is key basic information and uh, the name field of this structure contains virtual box, they replace it with some random string, and this works. It's not enough, though. There was this other revision, which actually revealed the presence of the uh, virtual box when you're looking for the mode supported by a display. There will be a virtual box string coming out. And um, this is a simple countermeasure to defeat this evasion. What we'd like to do next, uh, we're actively working on Blue Pill. We would like to add other features that can help other analysis tasks, like uh, robust API tracing or malware unpacking. But we would also like to see how much of this can be applied to virtual machine introspection technology, for instance, when you're dealing with targeted malware where transparency is, is just one part of the story. You also have targeted attempts. But, um, we have an upcoming research paper on this one, but uh, what I will really hope out of this is that people are going to give us feedback. Um, this is the reason why we are releasing Blue Peel as open source. We really hope to hear from the community. If the community is going to contribute to this project, it will be amazing. And uh, I would like to conclude my talk by saying that uh, if you're, you're a malware analyst, you know your time is precious. You don't want to waste it disarming non-red pills, doing this repetitive work. But if you're an employer and you're employing malware analysts, you know that malware analysts aren't cheap either. So um, yeah, I hope that Blue Pill can be useful for, for dealing with evasive malware. Thank you very much.